Hi everybody, good morning and happy Friday. My name is Rachel Chandler and I am married to Justin Chandler who is one of the pastors here at The Crossing and I'm really excited to be with you today. I'm also really excited that it's Friday. Um, Justin and I generally just do a big exhale um, when we make it to Friday <laughs> um, because our kids are still alive and hopefully they learn some stuff and we still like each other. So I feel like that's the mark of a successful week. And hopefully you feel that way too. I'm giving myself a thumbs up. Hopefully you can give yourself a thumbs up. We made it, it's Friday. And hopefully um, we have a relaxing weekend ahead of us. So that's my hope for my family and it's my hope for you guys as well. Um, so, one of the things that we've been doing uh, for our morning devotions is we're walking through this process called SOAP, which stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. Now, I've been personally impacted by this method um, after Justin introduced it to me because it made spending time with the Lord and quiet time and engaging with Scripture um, just a lot more accessible and a little bit less intimidating. Um, I grew up in church. But still this idea of devotions and spending time with God every day felt um, kind of intimidating because I felt like I wasn't doing it right. I don't know who I was comparing myself to, but I just felt like I'm not doing this right. So I'm just not going to do it at all because I'm a perfectionist and I have a tendency to avoid things um, if I feel like I'm not going to do an excellent job. So I'm happy to say that since Justin introduced this method to me and has introduced it to our family, um, I don't shy away from spending time with the Lord and with scripture because I know... Um, a really easy method and I know a way to engage with it um, and I'm really thankful for it. So hopefully you felt the same way about this process. Um, it's been really impactful for me in my life and I hope that you feel um, the same way. So the scripture that we're going to focus on today is Psalm 139. Uh, Nicole Romero shared this past Sunday through this passage. Um, she did a fantastic job. So if you haven't had a chance to check out her uh, message, I would really encourage you to do so. Uh, it was a great message for moms and a great message for everybody. So I hope you check it out. And then on uh, Monday, she shared some observations with us. And then on Wednesday, Melissa walked through some application. So today we're gonna talk about prayer. And again, this whole idea of praying scripture was something that was new to me until I was introduced to this process. Um, but one of the things that I love about praying the Psalms specifically is one that it's, well, it's written by a real guy, David, with a lot of issues, so I can relate to David. Um, but also just the fact that they're written as worship um, and songs or poems unto the Lord. And so what's great about them is that you can literally just read the words on the page. You don't have to change them if you don't want to. You don't have to add to them if you don't want to. Simply reading the Psalms is a great way to pray. And um, so I'm excited to do that with you this morning. So one of the things that Nicole touched on in her sermon, um, she talked about um, three lies that many of us have struggled with or maybe we believe about ourselves. And she combated them with truth that is found in this passage. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the lies that she shared and then the truth that she shared. And then I'm just going to share just the scriptures that I've been praying through this week and how I've been engaging um, with this passage. So um, the first uh, lie that she talked about or that Nicole mentioned was this lie that you don't matter. Um, I know that I've struggled with this and I think specifically, you know, I've struggled even as a mom with this, but I think probably a lot of us can relate to this lie of just, I don't matter. Nobody sees me, right? Um, so as a stay-at-home mom, I know I struggled with this because so much of what we do as parents is kind of done in secret and it can be kind of a thankless job sometimes. It can feel that way. Um, but I know many of us, we have friends that have been furloughed and laid off and they're not working right now. So there's some insecurity around just their productivity and do I matter? Um, but the truth is, and the truth that the scripture tells us is that we are perfectly known. And I'm so encouraged by that, knowing that God knows me so well. Um, he knows my thoughts and my insecurities and the things that I'm struggling with. And he cares so much about me. Um, Nicole referenced verses 1 through 12, but for our time this morning, um, verses 1 through 3 really stuck out to me. And it's, you've searched me, God, and you know me. 
You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Again, you can just read that and it's a prayer already. God, you searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You know when I'm waking up and when I'm going to bed at night. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm struggling with. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. So this idea that we are perfectly known um, can assure us that um, what we do matters and we matter because we matter to God. Um, so I hope that that prayer um, and that truth really resonates with you um, today. Um, the next lie that Nicole talked about was that there's something wrong with you. This lie that there's something wrong with you. So I think most of us can probably relate to this, right? Because there's something that we're dissatisfied um, about ourselves. Like there's something about us that we're just not really a big fan of, right? But the truth is that Nicole shared um, is that we are perfectly made, right? So God has made us exactly as he wanted us to be and God doesn't make any mistakes. So I tell my boys this all the time. I have three sons and they're all very different and I wanna celebrate that. I wanna celebrate those differences. I want to celebrate the uniqueness and just the amazing gifts that God has placed in them. And I tell them like, God has a plan for your life that nobody else on earth can fulfill. And that's a pretty amazing thing. Uh, but that's a truth for you. And that's a truth for me as well, um, that we're perfectly made and God didn't make any mistakes. And the verse that Nicole reference, references for this was verses 13 through 15, but I'm gonna read verse 14 over us. And it's, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. So again, reading the Psalms is so great as a prayer because you can just read it and you're praying. I praise you God because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. So I pray that that truth, that we are perfectly made, um, really gets into your soul and know that you're perfectly made and there's nothing wrong with you. Um, this lie, the last lie that Nicole shared is the one that I can relate to the most, especially in this season that we find ourselves in. And it's the lie that someone else is doing it better. Okay, so comparison I think is something that probably we all struggle with. Um, and I know that I've struggled with it really at every season. So as a kid, as a teenager, as a mom, um, I always feel like someone else is doing a better job than I am. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually looked at Justin at the end of a day over the past eight weeks as we've you know been teaching our kids at home and life is just looks really different now. I've said to Justin, like, are we doing a good job? Are we doing enough? Who's gonna, like, who's gonna pay for their therapy? <laughs> Like what we don't know what we're doing, right? Like clearly, surely someone else has the magic sauce and we need to get a hold of that because we're not doing it right. But Nicole reminded us that we were made for this moment because the truth is that we are perfectly placed, right? So this family, this social circle, these crazy times, we are made for this because God knew and he placed us here on purpose. So those kiddos that you're raising um, are perfectly placed with you. Right? Those friends that you have, the coworkers, the people that you are coming into contact with, um, they're perfectly placed. You are perfectly placed and God has a plan. And that's a pretty amazing truth too. Um, the verse that she referenced for this was verse 16. And this is it. It says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So that's an amazing thing that all of my days were written. All of they were, they were preordained, right? Or pre-planned. So just this truth that God has a plan, God's in control, and God wasn't surprised by any of this. My mom used to say that to me when I was younger and worried about stuff. She'd say, Rachel, honey, you might be surprised, but God isn't. He has a plan and he knows and we can trust him. Um, and so I'm really grateful and thankful for that truth, specifically just in this season that we're in um, as a church, as families, as we're all going through such, such this weird time, but just knowing that um, God has a plan and that we can trust him. So I hope that these truths uh, resonate with you today, um, just knowing that you are perfectly known, perfectly made, and perfectly placed. And if you're struggling in any of these areas, I hope that you can go back through these verses and pray these verses. If your kiddos are struggling, I know my kids are having hard days, right? We're having good days, we're having hard days too. But these are truths that we can pray over our kids or over your friend that calls who's just at her wit's end. Pray these scriptures over her. Um, so I hope that, um, that this has been helpful. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and we hope to see you this weekend online for our services. We love you and we're praying for all of you too.